Hello there YouTube, this is Wheelchair21, and on today's rolling review, it's none other than the Hillhurst Manor's playset. This playset is quite large, but quite compact, and is overly, overly well made of crap. Because it's made of flimsy cardboard, and pretty good solid plastic to hold it together. Problem is, the plastic doesn't hold it together, and the cardboard being flimsy doesn't honestly lock in place. Thus causes problems when assembling this goddamn SOB. First off, the Hillhurst Monster playset comes with five. Yes, five of the Hillhurst Monsters. Now you're probably sitting here going, five? I only see four. Well, let's look at our first feature to this toy. The opening organ, which shows, well, Flabber's molesting ghost version. Once pushing it in, you pull out, and there's your flabber figure with weird flabber cutout thing in the freaking organ. Yes. And pretty much, there's all five of your figures. And the only points of articulation they have are in their goddamn arms. Yes, they're gonna hug you to death, or grope you to death, or whatever. I mean, Wolfgang looks alright for an, you know, crappy American maid action figure. He's probably my favorite of actually all the Hillhurst monsters because, you know, he's a werewolf that is technically the family pet. But, you know, he's competent in his own right. Then you have everyone's other second favorite, or usually favorite, you know, character, which is Count Fangula, Count Fang. They just normally jokingly call him Fangs. Mums, who's... I don't, I don't really know what you do. Mum, you were just kind of there. You just, you know, nursemaid to Frankenbean. But, yeah. The, these overall vinyl figures are just kind of crap. But they're pretty good in their own right. I mean, they are good cartoony characterizations of the characters they're supposed to be a reference to. I mean, at least Frankenbean doesn't look as disgusting as he does in the show. I mean, he was probably the worst made, well, Frankenstein monster knockoff. I've ever seen, but that's neither here or there. And then we got Jay Leno, you know? Because flabbericious, expialidocious, bullcrap. Anyways, yeah, the figures, crap. The playset, pretty interesting. I mean, we got cool features all around. As you can see, there's a lever here on the bookshelf that normally is there, which when spins around shows that weird statue. Uh, it looks more Asian Ask, I, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a Shinto slash Buddhist like design like based on a Majin or whatever. But anyways, yeah, pretty much action f f gimmick Majin Akuma. Yeah, spin around door, bookshelf thing. It's weird, they just kind of combine the lobby of the house in with the organ room of the house. The cool, you know, place where people, eat, people I should say, the cast usually hung out. Then you have these weird sliding stairs that show a dead skeleton. That's pretty much all you got on the first level. The second level has some crazier crap, but it's not the best crap in general. I mean, yeah. It only has that much. Three action features on the bottom, and the second floor has technically three, but I only count two of them, and I'll show you why. Now on our second floor, we'll sh talk about and show the other action gimmicks to Hillhurst playset. Now you remember how there was an empty, like, gapeless door thing that led to some trans-dimensional area. Well, they replaced that with a fallout freaking side plate, or I should say railing bar to your freaking staircase, where if you press this, it's supposed to knock a figure through the railing and off the playset. Honestly, I'm not going to put a figure there because, one, I don't want to break a figure, and two, I don't want to take the precautions of breaking a figure. One of the other ones is these doors over here, these cardboard doors, actually fold out and fold in to lock in place to be another trap door area right over here as I have to turn the camera I realize right here is a trap door thing which is supposed to knock you off the balcony and through the doors now I'm gonna push this door open so post possibly a part of the thing can be seen as you can see lever it up throw a figure through the doors however it doesn't really work especially with the type of cardboard used that locks in the doors, they just don't go through. It's it's one of those ones where you like it as a display piece and you like playing with your figures down in the organ area. 
our last one, crappy, crappy Wheel of Faces, where you see Mum, you see Wolfgang, you see Frankenbean, Fang, Flabber, and the regular portrait face. Now, in the show, though, they just took away the eyes, like all old mystery movies, and looked out through the freaking face. So, I mean, that's all you really got with this set. Um, gives you six cool, gimmicky things to do with your action figures, but only, like, five of them really work and matter. The organ, one, you put Flabber's figure in there, he comes out of the freaking organ, just like in the show. You got the weird, you know, movable statue demon thing, uh, the revolving bookcase, and then you got some weird, wacky, weird, you know, zany crap that Flabber would do around the house, like, you know, the weird trans-dimensional door thing that everyone would go through, which is now replaced as a railing thing. Uh, you got the whole staircase thing, which Flabber would slide down or, and stuff, stuff throughout the show. And then you got a crappy balcony that was never even seen or used in the show, so... I mean, most you ever saw was the lobby, the weird catacomb, and the room with the organ, I guess you would say the living room. You barely ever saw anything upstairs, and when you did, it was probably just the same room reused like three times, and, and the attic twice. Oh yeah, and I think they used the basement a lot more in season two. And as I said, we're coming to our final evaluation, where I can honestly say, as a kid, I actually loved this playset, I had fun playing with this playset. I honestly did not love the construction of this playset. Uh, if people notice, this is propped up on a board. Uh, my father thought the best idea was screw the base frame into the block of wood to help, in a sense, add a better brace to it, add a better foundation to it. And it kept, you know, a lot of the parts together, like the organ, the main frame, the stairwell, all close together, allowing you to put then the rest of the frame to the stair, the staircase... And then the rest for the upper story, for the balcony, the doors, and keep the cardboard well in place. Hell, if you see, there's a giant gap in the corner. Like, look at this. There's there's a gap right here. That's one because the cardboard warped over the time. We kind of fixed it by putting a lot of pressure on it, but it hasn't done a lot of justice yet. You also should probably put a bit of tape around the edge to really lock it in place. I don't know why they didn't decide to make more clamps to hold it together around the seam and around the corner. That's probably one of their biggest flaws with this goddamn toy is keeping it together. And I'm pretty sure a lot of kids threw it out because they couldn't keep the goddamn thing together. Luckily enough, you know, my dad and grandfather, like, whipped up this board, screwed it into the board, and then, like, taped the hell out of the, the edges to keep it all in place. I mean, the biggest part is... When it's not trying to keep the balcony or the second floor in place, you have to worry about the goddamn bookshelf falling out on you. Honestly, it's not worth it unless you love Beetleborgs. I mean, the only reason I kept it for so long was because it was rare. And, two, it was Beetleborg related. Now, I'm not really a true Beetleborg lover, but, hell, I mean, it's a part of Metal Hero history, technically. So, yeah, I seemingly kept it. Thank God Sound Out was willing to take it off my hands, and thank God I gave him a good deal, because most of the ones on the secondary market are, right now, mitten box being sold for, like, $200. I don't even think anyone has this complete or still intact in this day and age, let alone, you know, out of the box used. Yeah. I'm that schmuck. Yeah. But now Sound Out's gonna be that schmuck. So, ha! Huh. He can take this piece of crap off my hands, and he's probably going to love the hell out of it. Even though he's going to probably bitch and complain about the wear and tear this, you know, overall set's hat. I mean, it's not going to stay in perfect condition. I mean, it's made of freaking cardboard. I can't believe my Godzilla Treadmasters one is in better condition, and Treadmasters kind of sucks. Nevertheless, you know, it was good for the time when I had it. It's good right now. It's not the best. Age really did get the best of it. Even the figures, you can see there's some wear and tear on their paint apps and applications. At least they're still sort of intact. Don't know if they'll ever break or explode, but we'll find out when Sound Out reviews this thing, because I hope the guy he does review it, and I hope the guy he gives it a better review than I can, because, yeah, this thing kind of falls apart on me, like, every left and right. Maybe he can figure out something to keep it better in shape, better together, 
Maybe he can fix the rest of the warp issues with the goddamn cardboard. Maybe he can do something more, because I sure as hell can't. Anyways, you can see this review here on my YouTube channel currently, the Sound Out Edition, probably on his channel in the future, and also at HeroTaku.com and probably Gideon Blogger.